Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. So, what are we working with? In white, I've got uh, Shadow Sky, Realm Cloak Giants, the two sweepers. I've got Lara Dombringer. In blue, we have Patient Rebuilding. Can kind of beat its own win condition. And in black, I've got some decent cards as well. Ooh, Amber Cleave in red. Could be nice for an aggro deck. Storm's Wrath, more sweepers. Green. Doesn't seem too exciting. Do have a Casualties and a Garruk though. Ashok and Anthro God Eternals could be good in blue black. Hydroid Crisis. So, I've got some decent top end cards. And once again, Field of the Dead, although no Golos this time. And Gilded Lotus could give us some nice ramp to maybe set up a Hydroid Crisis. So this is probably going to be another 4 or 5 color monstrosity, if I had to guess. But this time we actually have some sweepers, which should come in handy. Alright, let's go color by color, all the cards. So the only white cards I really like since it doesn't look like we're going to have an aggro deck here. Our Shatter, Lyra, and Realm Cloak Giants. In blue, I like Patient Rebuilding. And that's about it. I guess Commands could be fine. Blue seems kind of weak overall outside of the cards we could splash. Although I guess enters double blue. But yeah, I could, like, not play blue and just splash Ashok, which shouldn't be too difficult. And then... In black, what else do we have? Black has a bit of everything. Got some cheap removal, some expensive removal. Not sure about invasion. Knight's usually okay. Dread presence depends how the mana base looks like. And then red seems pretty bad. Green gives us Karyatid, that's nice. Then I think we're a Pelt Collector deck. Beanstalk is good. Probably not enough enchantments for Satessan Champion. Could always play the Lovestruck Beast as an early roadblock. And then maybe Voracious Hydra. And then Casualties and Garruk. Seem pretty good. Could maybe splash Night of Autumn. I'll have to take a look at how many token makers we have, but Riss is an option. And then Hydro Crisis and Risen Reef could be blue cards I want to splash. Although less sure about the Risen Reef. And then Icy Lotus. Not sure about Troxos. Doesn't seem like Traxxas would be a great fit. And Helm of the Host is usually decent. Yeah, Riss plus Garak could be a thing. Uh, Crucible plus Fable Passage is a combo, but didn't think it's worth it to include it. So I'm not playing red, but I'm basically a four color deck otherwise. Most of my fixing is red, sadly. So I don't get much of it. Yeah, the fixing this time is pretty poor. It's like one Hinterland Harbor and a Fable Passage. Could play Lotus Fields. So I might not be able to play a crazy multicolor deck given the mana base. So if we had to cut it down to like three colors instead of four. So yeah, there's like three white cards I like. And the two main blue cards I guess would be Ashok and Krasis. Risen Reef is pretty mediocre if it's on the splash. 
Ashok is pretty good though. And I guess Knight of Autumn is not a reason to play whites. Yeah, I mean, we don't have a lot of ramp. So, Krasis is only great if we draw Lotus. And we still have a lot of expensive cards we can cast, so... I think I'm just gonna cut the blue. Which means we cut the Hinterland Harbor. So just all basics, one Fable Passage. So this mana base is gonna be ambitious, but maybe I can end up like black-white with a green splash. But I guess I need green for my Karyatid and my Beanstalk Giants. Yeah, Giant Killer is another card we could play. Alright, so what are we working with here? If we can somehow cast our spells, is this even good? Got a lot of five drops. Probably not playing all of them. My removal situation is Disfigure, Spark Harvest, Intervention. Voracious Hydra. And then... Rankle. Could be good with Riss, but not great with all these sweepers. Garrick, casualties. Hmm, maybe I just have to go blank green. Yeah, I would like access to the sweepers, but I, th I don't think the mana base is going to be realistic. Like, even if we count the green mana fixing, the beanstalk and the karyatid, splashing a single white card is feasible. I could splash Knight of Autumn, but Shatter and Lyra and Realm Cloaked are just not going to cut it. And I think overall black green offers the most. So this is 37 cards. I mean, at this point I could just splash Krasis and Ashok and cut to whites. Like Riss, I can still play for green. I don't want Reef, but I do want Krasis and Ashok. Does Fauna Shaman do anything for me? Not really. It's a little slow, we don't have many creatures to begin with. Dread Presence is probably okay now that we're down to two colors. And I could consider Invasion. Uh, it's... let's see, it makes zombie token, so that's good with Crib Breaker, although it's only gonna make one token. I can sacrifice the token to Rankle, so I can do that over and over. Can sack it to Cavalier of Knights. So it does have a few combos in the deck. I have zero enchantments, so... Uh, so that's champion's not gonna make the cuts. Could play Arasta as a random filler creature. Nah, I don't think we have enough ramp for Finale. So it's either Invasion or Arasta. Probably okay to play 17 lands when we have Karyatid, Beanstalk and Lotus. Although 18 could also be correct. Would help with the mana. And we do have a lot of uh, mana sinks here too, with Crib Breaker, Riss, Krasis, Voracious Hydra, so I think I'd rather just play 18 lands. How good is Helm of the Hosts? It's not amazing. It's uh, pretty awkward with Krasis and Voracious Hydra. It's only really good with, like, 
I guess Rankle, Dread Presence, Cavalier, Doomisper, kind of these 4-5 mana creatures. How good is it? Blood for Bones. Also not amazing, but it is just a good grindy card, I guess. Bit of synergy with the Doom Whisper. Yeah, both the Helm and the Blood for Bones I could see cutting. I am down for 18 lands. Means I have room for like two more cards, maybe. I guess Invasions may be fine. Still works with my Rankle and my Cavalier. What's my uh, historic count for Traxos? Don't think it's high enough. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Don't think six is gonna cut it. Uh, sadly, God Eternals is double blue. If it was blue and double black, I would definitely play it, but it's a little hard to cast. So I have room for one more card. I mean, 19 lands is also fine. I've got a lot of X spells. Eris has a 6 mana activated ability. Could just play random Fauna Shaman as a 2 mana 2-2 two -two, or Arasta. I guess Arasta might be okay. If I ever get a spider token, I can do a few things with it. And I guess we're somewhat weak to flying creatures. Yeah, Thrash Threat just for the green half could be worth it, but... So double checking my pool. So we're not playing white, mostly because the mana base doesn't allow it. But we do have like a couple good white cards, especially the sweepers. The only blue card I'm kind of sad about is Patient Rebuilding. But that's also going to be difficult to fit into the deck. Patient Rebuilding plus the White Sweepers would kind of work well together. But the problem is that the rest of blue whites is pretty bad. Red's also pretty bad since we don't have an aggressive deck to use Embercleave successfully and kind of difficult to build it more controlling with uh, Storm's Wrath. We're playing most of the green cards. Yeah, I mean, Nyx Bloom and Finale are kind of a combo with each other, but getting up to 7 mana is going to be a challenge. We have a very little ramp. We would be leaning very hard on the Gilded Lotus. And then... Nothing else amazing here. Lotus Field is an option. But I think I'm fine without it, especially when we want plenty of swamps for Dread Presence anyway. And then it didn't seem like we had enough creatures for Helm of the Host. Definitely would have liked a little bit more ramp, especially with like the two Hydras in the deck. And then how many islands do I place? So I have Ashok, Krasis, both Carrotet and Beanstalk fix for blue, Lotus fixes for blue. So Harbor, Fable Passage and Island should be enough. And then probably need an extra forest in here, which puts me up to 9 green and 9 black. I do need both double green and double black, but mostly double black. And that also gives me more swamps for the Dread Presence. All right, this seems functional enough. No real sweeper, sadly. But a lot of spot removal. Especially creatures and planeswalkers that can double up as removal too. And then the two Hydras has good mana sinks in the late game. Yeah, this is going to be a mulligan for me. This is better. I mean, I'm just going to start using Crypt Breaker a bunch, so maybe I don't keep the Doom Whisper and just go 
Crib Breaker make a bunch of zombies, casualties as interaction. Don't need double blue. So I'll probably end up discarding the island here. I'm always jealous when my opponent plays Phyrexian Arena. Haven't opened one yet. Hopefully we can destroy it with the uh, casualties a little bit later. Yeah, I guess Crib Breaker Crucible is kind of a combo too. Sure. Hmm, how greedy do I get? A land or Garrick? I think Garrick. That's nice. Just gonna draw now. I guess I can make a zombie and draw with the zombies that I have. And before like a ritual of soot, because I do want to keep my lands to an extent. I think I just draw with what I have. And hope to draw a four mana play. All right, still fine. Don't really want to draw the Doom Whisper here. All right, next turn I can slam an Ashok, hopefully draw lands for casualties, which is looking pretty good here. Yeah, I was kind of afraid that would happen. At least I didn't give them an extra zombie. Gotta be careful with the Storm Tamer here that it doesn't counter my casualties. Might have to minus Ashok first. Opponent passes with three mana up. It's a little suspicious. Just gonna attack plus play Karyatid. Could maybe Spark Harvest, I guess. The shadows awaken. I guess I can sack the Karyatid at this point. Probably baits out to counterspell. All right. Is it time to tap out? I'll take it. So, enchantments. Land, creature, artifact. Let's kill this artifact. Alright. 
I guess I should hold landing as if the Rona shock. Alright, that did it. Could have also drawn Red Presence, which is not a reason to hold the Swamp. Nice hands, especially if the Carrotid survives. I guess there's like Wildborn Preserver I need to worry about. It's just not worth the one damage. Is Preserver even in the cube? I don't even know. It's not? Alright. Missed out on one damage. start digging. I do have a lot of life loss here between Invasion and Doom Whisper, so I have to be a little careful. Hmm. Don't need the forest, so we keep Beanstalk. Eh, it's pretty medium. I'll keep a Krasis. And let's see, this makes two mana, so x equals five, or I can just play Garrick. Just playing Garrick isn't bad. Although it might be better once they have something I can minus and kill right away. Although if they have a sweeper incoming next turn, then I'll get a ton of loyalty on Garrick if I make the wolves first. So it's kind of close. I guess I would lose Karyotid, so I lose two mana for Krasis. I think I Krasis, but it's close. Alright, Lovestruck Beast plus Cavaliers is kind of a combo. Cavalier plus Garak is kind of a combo. That's fine. Can probably afford one surveil. I kind of want to put a three mana creature in the graveyard with uh, Doom Whisper for Cavalier. Right, let's do one more. Yeah, I guess I'll take the Hydra. Fine. This seems like a good turn for Garak make some wolves. Has to not overextend too much. Opponent takes it. Alright, it's fine by me. And our opponent explodes. Well, Carrotid just ramped us into some goodies. Opponent really didn't have great answers. And 
no black mana, can't really cast any spells. Alright, I think we get rid of our Asta, Beanstalk for blue mana, can at least Crisis for X equals 2. No. They're gonna try and mana screw us, or they just take the best card. Alright. Well, <laughs> I don't have much left, just a bunch of lands at this point. Still gonna get my blue mana. Well, being on a play with a mulligan and a thought erasure, there's not much left. That's a good one, although it's probably not going to resolve. Huh. We got him. I think we wait. Would love to blow up that uh, Hinterland Harbor, but they gotta give me some better targets. Food tokens, not quite what I was uh, thinking of. Don't have much of a choice now. Handed. I've got a Knight of Malice, my opponent has a Doom Whisper. One of these is not like the other. My Hydroid Crisis got discarded, so I guess like Voracious Hydra and Garrick would be good draws. Did shuffle my library in the meantime. Suddenly our opponent's on Demon Tribal. This is not looking good. Yeah, being forced to cast the casualties before they actually had any creatures in play was unfortunate. Do we even have a out at this point? Maybe I should have kept a fetch uncracked for dread presence. I guess like Erebos's intervention. 
does something. Yeah, I think we're pretty dead. Eh, GG's. Sure. All right, that's the targets. All right, got some good plays lined up. Probably start with a Doom Whisper, which can fill the graveyard for a Cavalier. Not in a terrible spot. Land 6 gives us casualties. We've got two creature removal spells in hand. Against blue-green, so they shouldn't have too many sweepers, but they could have ways of stealing my creatures, of course. So that's the main concern. Cavalier of the Thorn variety. Immortal Sun in the graveyard. So could maybe sag the knights to kill Cavalier. What else would be a good draw here? I mean, I kind of want to just keep a lance for next turn. Uh, Voracious Hydra would only be for X equals 4. That's not enough. I think I just keep the forests, play Cavaliers this turn, and then I can casualties next turn without needing to surveil again. And more lands for Hydra are always fine. Can attack first, I suppose. There's no real downsides. And then if they want to put Immortal Sun back on top, they would just be dead on board. Goes for a Crawl Harpooner. Sure. I guess, let's see, two. They don't even have enough in the graveyard though, because the Cavalier got exiled. Yeah, maybe they forgot about Cavalier getting exiled. One kept up five mana. It's a little suspicious. I guess we can surveil. Probably gonna just end up playing the Voracious Hydra here. Riss is decent because it lets me double spell. Rankle's awkward because it doesn't get past Harpooner. But I could maybe keep it for next turn if it lines up better. So let's keep Riss. So 
So let's start by playing wrists and see what they do. And then wrist plus rankle is pretty good too, because we can keep feeding tokens to uh, the ability. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Can still attack. Gain my life. Okay, Galta is a scary card, but our opponents basically tapped out, so the casualties should be more than enough. All right, sweet. I was just waiting for the Bolas's clutches or the Curabas Sea God, but uh, didn't happen. And we got her in the end. Um, what's her game plan here? I guess Riss into Knight and then turn 3 make a token could be better than just going off with Crib Breaker. Or I could Crib Breaker make a zombie turn 2. I think I like going with the token approach. Also lets us try something a little different. And then Wrist plus Crib Breaker is also kind of a combo, so we can maybe start doubling zombies later. So up against the Gruul, Rimrock Knight, not the best blocker. And then Riz being a white creature for Knight is a nice bonus too. So I'm just gonna make a token with Riz. Which can also block the Rimrock Knight if I wanted to. Alright, it's pretty good. So now I could go make a token, play Crib Breaker, or I could just play Dread Presence. Although playing Dread Presence is a lot more exciting if we can actually follow up with a Swamp right away. So I don't mind the Crib Breaker plus token play this turn. Send in both token and knights. I don't think they'll trade, because if I have a removal spell they would lose out on their plus one plus one counters. And then I'm just hoping to draw another Swamp, basically. So they do have a 4-4 blocker now. Alright, perfect. So Cavalier can sack a token, killing the 4-4, and I can send in almost everyone. Alternatively, I could go Dread Presence, play Fable Passage, attack with just a Knight, which they can block with the token, and then I can kill the Lanner Elves, getting a Swamp. But I don't really want them drawing the cards, so let's just kill it with Cavalier. Alright, and with that, our opponent explodes. Alright, 
seeing some of the small synergies with our token makers and cavalier. Alright, so at the very least we made our gold bank. So that feels nice. And then if we win one more, instead of the entry fee in gold, we get the entry fee in gems, which is a little strange. But I guess gems are more valuable than gold to some people. That is a good point. If I lose the next one, I get to play an extra game. So it's just pure value if I lose. So if I lose here, it's intentional, just so you know. Got that uh, Karyotid and Lobstruck Beast synergy going on. It's the Golgari mirror. And then Riss is another 1-1 one -one to enable the beast in case they wipe the board. Or I could play out Riss, not sure yet. If they have like a golden demise here, I'll be sad to run out Riss. But I don't have a great play lined up for the next turn other than making a token, so I think I'll still play both out. Alright, no sweeper, please. Well, I did call it. Alright, so now we don't have much going on. So close, yet so far away. At least I won't feel bad about sacking this to the Spark Harvest. Crisis for two. Do I even bother killing it? Nah. Now that's worthy of removal, if only I could cast my spells. I guess I can still Spark Harvest it. And then I see can tap down probably a land. That's a good target for intervention. Alright, I think we just intervention and then I see again. I could intervention for I guess one more and not not tap down the cemetery. But they don't have enough mana to sack this and grow the Kraken. They could have like a random opt. 
So maybe it's safer to just kill this and not use Icy. Well, if we get to cast our spells, we could be back on track. Casualties could do some work. Bone splashing white, I see. Casualties of war intensifies. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to play casualties yet. Just play Doom Whisper and use Icy on the planes. And make them sag the globe if they want to cast anything. Probably see removal on the Doom Whisper since we haven't played anything for a while. Do I want to surveil? Probably. I'll take blue mana basically. Right, passage should do. So this should be crisis for five. Opponent starts crying with castle. I'm just hoping they play like a random planeswalker that it's good to casualties of war or maybe a more valuable artifact or creature. Any excuse to fire it off basically. They did keep one card on top. Thassa plus exclusion mage is sort of a combo. Although bouncing hydroid not the best plan. Although, is I guess Thass has a May ability up to one, so yeah, they don't have to flicker anything because they don't want to bounce their Krasis and they don't want to bounce my Krasis. An Exclusion Mage can't bounce their Krasis back, it's an opponent's creature, otherwise they could use a Mage to put Krasis back in their own hands. So they're just going to tap it down. Get in for four. Sadly, Thass is indestructible, so can kill it with casualties. Ashok's not bad. Alright, so what are we doing? Ashok could plus, which just gets the token bounced by Exclusion Mage. Maybe the play is just two casualties here. Kill their planes. Kill globe, exclusion mage. Yeah. I think it's better to set it up that way and then I can start plussing Ashok and keep my tokens, which play well with the uh, Cavalier. Don't have enough mana for Ashok and Rankle this turn. Artifacts, creature. And then the planes. I think killing the planes probably still better if I can also kill the guild globe. 
And then I think I'm attacking since they can tap down my crisis anyway. And I'll probably end up tapping down their crisis instead of a lands. And then next turn Ashok should be good to go. Opponent's not doing anything. It's a little suspicious. Probably see Thassa tap down my Crisis then. No. Should go full control in case of any flash shenanigans. Alright. Not sure what's going on. Maybe I did mess up their mana and they can't cast some of the spells in their hands. Maybe they're sitting on something like a Curabus the Sea God and they're just waiting for me to play something they want to steal. Or maybe they've got some sort of board wipe. Oh, if they're looking at my graveyard then it might indeed be a Commander Dreadhorde. Nothing too insane in my graveyard. They've got some okay things. Could have tried to upkeep, tap down a land to maybe mess up their turn sequence. But I think I just want to protect my life total, tap down Crisis again. Still bouncing Crisis. Opponent is down to four. And Tribunal for Ashiok, presumably. It's pretty good. So they did get white mana by stealing my wrist, which is pretty funny. I guess they can flicker Exclusion Mage to kill my token too here. So yeah, that was a good turn for them. Now they should just be dead to a hasty rankle, so that works out. Bam. Alright, that was a pretty sweet finish to this game. Yeah, maybe they got a little bit too greedy with that uh, Commander Dreadhorde. But yeah, if they got to untap there, they would have been pretty far ahead. So Sultai Pile number two, let's take another look here. Got the job done. Don't think we ever cast the Gilded Lotus, but could have been nice with these uh, two Hydras in the deck. And then the game we lost was the one where we kind of mulliganed and they shredded our hand apart with Thought Erasures and Elspeth's Nightmares. Cribbreaker did some decent work. But uh, it's mostly these expensive cards, the Casualties, the Garruk, the Ashoks, the Cavaliers, that did most of the heavy lifting. So we did try a few more aggressive decks in this cube, but they kind of fell flat as soon as we encountered a bit of resistance. So it feels like more of these mid-rangey, just play good stuff decks are the way to go. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.